Here is the raw materials I use when I'm making these pulse jets. This uh, stainless steel here, various types. This is uh, a 2B finish, this is a shiny finish, and this is an annealed stainless, which means it's very soft. You can actually bend it with your hands quite easily. This is a hardened or work hardened version. It's much, much stiffer, harder to work. Now, also I have some aluminium here, which I use for spinning up venturis. This is a, or aluminum, if you're in America. It's a very soft aluminum, it's almost pure, so it spins very well. And I'll show you the spinning process because it's rather interesting. You can use it to make spinners and all sorts of other things, but those are some of the raw materials. These are my slip rolls. These are called slip rolls. Basically it's, it's like a, an old ringer washing machine. You wind the handle here and it draws the metal in and because there is a third roll on the back it puts a curve in it. So by running the metal through these rollers I can turn flat sheets of metal into cones and pipes and tubes. I'll show you how that's done and then we weld those tubes up using the TIG welder. This is that TIG welder. It's an AC and DC TIG welder, 200 amps. Um, I have my auto darkening helmet here and we have a torch and so forth that goes on it. So basically this is used to fuse the aluminium, or sorry, fuse the stainless steel and the aluminium when necessary together to produce the pipes and cones which make up the pulse jet engines. This is my welding table with the earth clamp attached. Now uh, this is a jig I use here for holding everything together while I weld it up and there's also a number of other pieces of al aluminum here that I use when I'm aligning stuff when I'm making the engines. You can see bolts run through. It's a quite a convoluted process. I'll show you how it's done though and we have to get everything all jigged up just right before we weld it. Things like these brushes are essential because before you weld everything must be very very clean and there are my welding gloves because we don't want to get skin cancer from ultraviolet rays. And this is my lathe. I use this to turn up important parts like fuel jets and uh, other bits and pieces. It's got an electronic speed control here a four inch four jaw chuck, which means I can center stuff up very accurately. All my tooling is done by grinding high speed, uh, high speed tool steel rather than carbide inserts because these little lays, they don't really respond well to carbide inserts. They're not really rigid enough, but I've made an awful lot of stuff on this lathe. It served me very well over about 15 years and I will continue to use it. You'll see it in use when we make up face plates and valve plates and all that sort of stuff for these engines. This, of course, is a drill press. Everyone has seen a drill press. Use this for drilling holes. This is my milling machine. It's a manual milling machine. No computer stuff on here. It has a milling chuck here in which you put various milling cutters. Nice, strong milling vise. And sometimes we clamp stuff to the table. Now, this is used to mill slots where we want air to travel through for the front plate on the valved engines to mill the valve grids when necessary. Of course, got my protection here so I don't get stuff in my eyes and this is one of the key pieces of machinery in my workshop I use this an awful lot it's a great piece of gear now this is another very valuable piece of equipment when you're making pulse jets it's my homemade spot welder I made this myself uh, out of various bits in the workshop and it has a microwave oven transformer here so I get very high current through this incredibly thick copper wire which passes down these arms and there are little sharp ends here when I put two pieces of metal between them and activate the foot pedal on the floor little current flows through, a lot of current flows through and it spot welds the metal together so I can then go and put it on my jigs and weld it up with the TIG. Finally this is my spinning lathe that I've made myself. I has an electric motor here drives through our reduction gears and we put a form on here and then we put a plate of aluminium, a plate of aluminium on here and I can roll it back, spin it back over the form to create intake venturis and other shapes that are used in the pulse jet engines. This is a completely home built, all out of 25mm square and flat bar which I milled up on the mill and it's all bolted together, no welds in this, it's all done with bolts all the way through. Incredibly handy device because you can't really buy spinning lathes for a reasonable price these days but if you can't buy it, build it. That's the advantage of having enough tools. And the end result of all that tooling and so forth will be one of these pulse jet engines. Or actually, one a little bit different to this one. And as you can see, here are the tubes and cones made by the rolling process after we've cut our stainless steel. This is half millimetre. That's uh, 20,000. So it's very thin, very thin stainless steel, which makes it very difficult to weld. Although, if you look closely, I haven't done too bad a job with the welding. It's actually very hard to weld. One of the hardest things you can weld is very, very thin stainless steel sheet like that. Up the front, we have the intake venturi and this is aluminum, I've had to weld this as well, but I've spun this cone here on 
the spinning lathe, which is, there's no other way to do that apart from cut it, then it looks a bit bodgy, but this is aluminium or aluminum that's been spun over a form to get that nice tapered effect. And this is the intake tube here. There's a fuel jet in the bottom, which brings fuel into the motor. This is a valve plate, which I'll show you more about when we do it. This is milled up out of a solid disc of aluminum and has holes in it to allow the, the air and the fuel through. And really that's about it. That's, there's valves in there, which I'll show you also and how we make those. But that's the pulse jet engine, standard pulse jet engine. And you'll see how we make that. I'll go through the whole process and we'll put it on a model and we'll fly the snot out of it. So stay tuned to the XJet channel for the pulse jet engine build.